The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Media Services, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Hi everyone, welcome to Ion Oshkosh. Cheryl Hans along with Dan Rylance. And uh, on this particular edition of Ion Oshkosh, we're going to be talking with uh, Joe Furlow from the uh, Grand Opera House uh, for the first half. Uh, city manager Mark Roloff will be joining us in the second half. Um, we want to thank Joe for being very flexible here. We already had somebody else scheduled for tonight. Um, they had some problems on their end and some things fell through the cracks for them. So um, we'll try and have them back a, a, at a later date. But you were flexible enough to say, hey, I have a I problem free there. life. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you got a lot of problems yeah. right now. <laughs> and that's what we want to talk to you about. Um, Obviously, the uh, I think most people know that the Grand is closed right now um, while you're going through some renovations and repairs. But now it's the delay is probably longer than what you or anyone really expected because some other things were put together in a report. They've gone off to the State Historical um, Society, I guess, right. uh, State Historical the, Board. The Grand, so. being the oldest theater <laughs> in the state, uh, is listed on the National Register of Historic mm -hmm. Places, and that puts another layer of bureaucracy, quite mm -hmm. frankly, sure. in, in, in the whole system. The, the city, uh, who are our landlords um, for the nonprofit foundation that employs me, um, they acted very quickly. Mm -hmm. and, and they've been very, uh, city administration has been very supportive and proactive uh, in getting the engineer on site, getting the things taken care of, and, and moving to the point of saying, Here's, here are all the problems here is what we think we need to do. Now we've hit a little bit of a wall as the historical sure. society, they, they, they have to review it and yeah. say, yes, we agree. We agree mm -hmm. with your problem, mm -hmm. we agree with your solution, and here's what we think you should do. Okay. They have, as I understand, up to 30 days to review uh, and, mm. and give a ruling. Okay. Uh, and they've taken, you know, we, we've obviously, whole, every day is, it makes, certain parts of my life a little bit more mm -hmm. difficult. <laughs> more challenging. Uh, and, and so the, the quicker we get to this and on to the next, I mean, there are, there are a lot of different steps to, to do this and to mm -hmm. do it with the, with the transparency that it needs to be done. Sure. Mm -hmm. well, give us a little timeline, Joe, of when you first realized that you were going to be doing some renovations and that it needed some repairs. Um, walk us through this, this the historical timeline, if sure. you will. So. It, it starts actually uh, almost a year ago now with the, with the nonprofit foundation saying we'd like to take uh, an area in the annex uh, of the Opera House, the second floor annex. Uh, we're going to move our offices out. We had office space donated. And we were going to take that area and turn it into an audience services area, more restrooms, better refreshments okay. areas, and a place to, to go before and after the shows. Okay. Anybody mm -hmm. who's been to the Grand knows that the regular lobby is right. a little cramped. Sure. So um, we did that, and, and the foundation went out and started to raise funds. We didn't want to, it wasn't going to be a taxpayer kind of thing. We wanted to go out and raise the funds and mm -hmm. make the improvements to, mm -hmm. to the building. We okay. felt that was something we could do. So we went out and we raised about 65, 70 percent of, of, of this and started to get our, our way down this $200,000 project, um, $300,000 project, I'm sorry. And at that point, uh, the time came for the code review. Okay. Well, the code review came up with something that was really kind of unusual and unexpected on our part. Uh, the area in which the lounge was, was is sprinklered. Uh, however, the opera house itself was not. It's not unusual for renovations of that yeah. style. The theater I ran in Manitowoc was done the same way. But still, at this point, the, the code enforcement kind of said, well, we're going to look at the whole thing all over again, and, <laughs> and you need to sprinkle the whole building now. Mm -hmm. So we kind of turned back to the city uh, as the owners and the landlords and said, where do we go with this? Where do we go? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and 
again, this is another spot where they really stepped up to the plate and went in front of the council. The council voted to sprinkle the building mm -hmm. and so sure. that we can continue with the project. So we moved on from there and that took us to about January. Okay. Uh, in January, as part of the preparing for the sprinklers to be installed, they were to be done over the summer when we were closed, um, they started to look at the structure of the building, uh, the, the attic area, mm -hmm. and just to make sure it could hold up. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to understand, and, and some of the photos will show, the, the Grand was beautifully restored in the 80s, right up to that line. Mm -hmm. And everything from the ceiling up, including the ceiling, the ceiling structure, okay. uh, is circa 1883. Mm -hmm. It was state-of-the-art 1883. Um, so they wanted to make sure that everything was fine up there to, su to support this stuff. As they started to go through that, they noticed uh, this one strut in the, in the trusses, of, uh, the roof trusses. And, and, and fortunately, it was an area where you know, the, the, the roof of the Grand was blanketed with insulation. In this one area, this little problem was peeking out and these guys caught it. Mm -hmm. And frankly, they're heroes. Cause mm -hmm. Step A leads to step B leads to sure. step C, which mm -hmm. leads to averting a disaster, mm -hmm. as, right. far as, I can, as far as mm -hmm. I can say. Mm -hmm. right. They looked at this problem and they said, well, you know, that's, that's a symptom of what could be a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. So they kind of at that point in early February said, we need to take a closer look and see what this is all about. Mm -hmm. They started to peel away insulation and they noticed this, 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 this separation. Mm -hmm. uh, and what they noticed that, that, that disturbed them even more was it had obviously been fixed in the, it had obviously happened somewhere in the prior 50 years or so. Okay. Had been fixed in the 80s, allegedly, but the mm. fix didn't take. Okay. So it was clearly still a problem and something that happened continually since mm -hmm. 1983, 84, when, mm -hmm. when the building was renovated. That led them to the next step. They said, these trusses are bad. We need to, we need to check all these trusses. And as they did that, there are seven trusses that hold up the roof of mm -hmm. the Grand. Um, virtually all of them have some kind of damage. Mm. Two of them were particularly damaged and decayed. Um, the decay probably happened 20 years ago. Maybe it happened longer than 20 years ago. Uh, it was all covered by either floorboards or insulation or walls. Mm -hmm. So they started digging. And, they, and, and as, then the more they dug, the worse <laughs> the news got. Oh. Okay. Um, Finally, at, 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 at a point in late February, um, the engineer, Tom Carroll, who's the real hero kind of of this whole story, because uh, he knew all along, I, I, I would say to him, Tom, you know, shutting me down, is a, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. you know, that's going to be, in this economy, uh, we have a niche market as it you is, bet. and yep. it's, it, you know, this is a big deal. we got to get this right. Mm -hmm. And I think, to Tom's credit, he was looking for every conceivable way to prove that there was not a problem. Mm -hmm. And eventually the numbers just didn't work. Yeah. And he, he, he asked for outside help uh, to confirm that. And finally it got to the point where they all called me into City Hall 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, and not said, a call you want to get, said, is it? said, we have no choice. We have to close you. Well, we had a show at 7.30. Mm. So between 2 and 7.30, we secured Alberta Kimball Auditorium. Wow moved the entire show. The show was already set up. It was the Milwaukee rep. They'd already been on stage. They'd already done one performance. So we had to break down the show, cart it over to Kimball, call all of the customers. We had a full house that night. Mm. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and move, and the show went on at eight. And then I, I would have thought it impossible until we executed it. It wow. was really just, uh, it was amazing. That was your longest day? That was the longest day, but then, but it didn't end yet because we knew we'd also be closed the next night, okay. and we had a show then. Okay. So I was on the phone with that renter, uh, move, securing the auditorium, moving stuff again. So we got through that first weekend, and at that time they thought perhaps there was a fix that could happen short term to get us open. Well, the more they looked at it, the more it became apparent that That's two right. days turned into two weeks turned into yeah. now almost two months, mm -hmm. and there's more to come. Uh, it was like an onion. Every time they peel back a layer, there was something else. Once they started, uh, once we got past those first couple of weekends and moved some shows, we ended up moving 28 performances in 50 uses of the of the theater. Amazing. Um, it, so it, it really was, I just would never have thought it possible. Never say you've done it all in whatever your business is, because you just never know when something new is going to come up. Yeah. Um, 
as they started to do this, they, they started to, to worry even more because now, instead of just bringing up a sprinkler grid, they're talking about bringing hundreds of pounds of steel to support these trusses. Mm -hmm. Now we're really starting to worry about the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So they started to rip into the floorboard, two layers of floorboards. As they got into the floorboards, this is where it really, the bad news hadn't even begun because the floor joists that hold up the attic floor are attached to the trusses. But you know, unlike modern construction where there's like those little hangers that you set mm -hmm. the truss in nice, right. nice, right. 1883 construction <laughs> nailed a ledger board into the, tr into the truss, notched the floor joists into the ledger boards. Okay. So over the years, the ledger boards were pulling away, the floor joists were, 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 pulling up, were sliding off the ledger and it's the equivalent of instead of holding on with like this, the floor is holding on like this mm -hmm. and what it's holding on to is moving away from the wall. Mm. Wow. Now people really started to get nervous. <laughs> and to make matters worse, this is all connected. The, the, the mm -hmm. ceiling joists are connected to the floor trusses which are connected directly to the plaster ceiling. Well, you wouldn't expect it to be any other way. Well, no, it, yeah, no, <laughs> I, exactly. I, so, so, I mean, nothing can go, ever go right. So right? as we went through that, clearly at that point, now we've got a situation where the ceiling, if the floor goes, obviously it's going to take the ceiling with yeah. it. Um, <coughs> by this time, they had brought in, the contractors had, 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 if you walked into the Grand now, and I didn't bring a photo, I'm sorry about that, it's on the Facebook site. Um, there, there are, now the, the main premium seats of the Grand have all been removed, and there's these giant kind of uh, structures mm -hmm. holding up the trusses from below. And that was to, that originally that was to stabilize the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, now from those trusses they're getting a look at the plaster, which we discovered after they researched it, 80% of the plaster was put on in 1883. Wow. It's the original plaster. Uh, and as they got up close, the things you couldn't see from 30 feet below in that pattern ceiling were becoming real apparent, cracking, and separating from the lath and, and, and the more they looked at it, mm -hmm. the clearer they had an even bigger situation. Mm -hmm. The only good news of this when it comes to the historical uh, you know, beauty of the building is that ceiling, oh, while the plaster was old, the decoration was done in the 1980s. And it's not hand painted as the historical society originally thought. It's wall coverings, mm -hmm. which okay. can be replicated mm -hmm. and redone. Sure. So all, all along, uh, the, the city administration is reassuring the public and the, and the mm -hmm. folks who worked so hard to restore the place and the advisory board, uh, of the citizen advisory board, that no, our intent is to, it, we can restore this, mm -hmm. we can make this happen. So we get through all of this <coughs> and, and, and obviously we're closed. Um, and now we're finally at the point we are right now, which is we've identified all the issues, we've notified all the people. And now the next steps, is, as, as Mark I'm sure can tell you, is once, once the historical society says yes, then they can finally take the ceiling out, see the trusses from all angles, figure out what the cost is gonna be. At this point, we don't know the cost. Mm, okay. so, um, so Mark can't go back to the council <laughs> until he knows what the cost is. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so then, so th we're, I hope, close to the next step. Mm -hmm. But certainly, we're looking at months yeah. of closure yet. Sure. Mark I, has been, to his credit, uh, just uh, really firm about wanting to get us open for the fall season. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know whether that's gonna mm -hmm. happen. I, I certainly appreciate that, and it's certainly critical to us. I mean, we can only go so long. There's, there's the second half of the problem that that kind of gets lost in the equation is unlike other city-owned buildings, we're not a city staff. Right. None of us are city employees. There's a, there's a business operating within yeah. the city entity. It's the first public-private partnership out of all the ones that we have sure. in, in the community. Mm -hmm. So my worry right now, my job, is to try to keep the organization that operates the grand solvent and to keep programming alive so that we don't lose this niche market sure. and the, you know our, our, our place in, in, in the area and frankly don't hold on to my staff so sure. that when the building's done we're ready to go back in full full tilt. Sure and we, we can talk a little bit more about some of the impact issues that, that you've are already somewhat alluded to but you were good enough to bring some pictures so why don't we I'm take a look to at do that. You know, some of these photos and, and see what kinds of things we're really talking about. I'm going to look over my shoulder too because when <coughs> the time comes I'm going to want to see what I'm pointing at. So. 
basically this first shot is going to be of the of the attic and it's obviously the the, the view that folks don't normally see yeah. of the opera house i'm going to try to get the glare out of it um we're looking at the obviously the floor below um the the trusses you can see a little bit of the webbings i've got to get used to pointing going yeah. in reverse of the webbings there's some close-ups of that as well and all of the hvac uh, it runs through the ceiling as well obviously only uh theater technicians end up in this area on a regular basis mm -hmm. they go up to access the lights in the ceiling to focus them um this is the area this is the kind of uh, failure that they first started to notice and you can see from the chicken wire webbing that much of this joint was covered with it on top of that was was, was the uh, the silver insulation blanket sure so they just saw this little bit peeking out and uh you can you can see you some see of the decay right and then there's a better shot here when they got everything pulled oh, away wow you could see that how it's separating and this fix at the time was to stick a block in and then tie it all up and as you can see it's separated it's, it's and there's separate. separation beyond the block as well yeah so that's the first thing they saw and as they said this isn't even so much the problem as it is a symptom of a bigger problem mm -hmm. what it's saying is that this top piece this diagonal piece in the roof boy I'm, you think, think I'll be pointing right by the time we do this <laughs> the diagonal okay. piece of the roof is actually sliding past the horizontal yeah. portion uh, mm. uh, of the roof here we go yeah up straight as and well. and this is the result and ironically this is not an altered photo um but this dip obviously shows up much better in a well-lit photo than yeah. this but it has been there obviously since before the renovation yeah. because they renovated around it this is really a wave in here isn't it yes huh? it's actually and and that 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 spot in the floor that truss where it's failing is actually right here okay so I mean, there are some folks who actually thought this was an acoustical well, uh, I mean, it, part uh, of the grand. The fact is, it's a failure that had been obviously since the okay. 40s, 50s, or whatever, yeah. and, and renovated over. They felt at the time it was, yeah, and it stopped moving. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's really pretty incredible. What this shows is this is the same truss that we saw the failure okay. in. Okay. This is the bottom where the horizontal piece is meeting the diagonal piece. And back in the day, there was a little notch here in the wood that sat in this little notch here and what this shows is that the 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 diagonal piece has slipped some four and a half inches yeah. mm. beyond the bottom and, and is basically for in, in the broadest crudest layman's terms eventually might have poked its way out through the brick wall mm -hmm. wow so as they kept going um i have to see what i'm looking at here oh turn that one yeah <laughs> there we go yeah, that helps yeah. This is the uh, this is the second part of the issue. This is the um, the f now the floorboards have been pulled off. This is the truss. Floorboards have been pulled off, and we're looking at the ledger I told you about that was nailed in, and the board that was notched okay. that would hold up the floor. And then at the bottom there, you can see the plaster ceiling from behind. Well, you can see that this board has not only twisted away, but the nails have sheared off, and it's actually dropped. Uh, several inches, two inches, I think, is that. I can't see mm -hmm. it from here, but mm -hmm. two inches, I think. Exactly. And um, and the these pieces have begun to pull away from the wall and slide out the the area there, which would threaten to take down. I think he said that um, the engineer estimated there was eight or nine tons of plaster in each little section. Wow. Yeah. Um, <coughs> here we are looking <coughs> at the same issue from a different angle. Mm -hmm. The coin is there for. Uh, for emphasis, but this board is completely dropped now. It's actually below the truss, mm -hmm. and it's that kind of fingertip effect <coughs> of the uh, of the attic joist kind of hanging out by, by a fingertip. This is the end of a different joist. <coughs> and what it shows is the the rot over mm -hmm. the years was hidden by this is actually an exterior brick wall, mm -hmm. and. Um, this has begun. You can actually kind of stick your fist mm -hmm. in this, wow. and at this this wood this uh, metal piece was actually supposed to hold this truss up at this level. So this whole truss has sunk, and the only thing holding it up is the plaster cove, the curved mm -hmm. cove at the side of the theater. The building is no longer holding up the roof, 
the plaster coves are holding up the roof in this particular area, holding up the ceiling, rather. Um, from here, we're looking at, uh, again, some other areas of decay at, at the bottom of a, 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 of a rust, in the, and, and it's just another view of kind of the same idea of where the, the truss is now kind of actually pulled away from the masonry wall and is being held up by allegedly the plaster uh, of the ceiling, which we know is also failing. Um, here you can see a little bit more of the, the uh, this, is a, this, this is the sign of a good joint set in the other, we had showed you earlier where it slipped away. This is a good ledger joint. Um, this is what it, sh it should have looked like everywhere. And, uh, and a good example of what we wished we had found in the construction. Again, this is another view of these joints. Not only did we have an issue of them slipping off, but in many other areas they were cracking. Uh, and, and that's not two boards. That is supposed to be one, uh, one joist. Hmm. And it's literally cracked uh, to the point where the bottom half of it is being supported now by the plaster rather than by the, the roof structure. Again, this is just another kind of look at more splitting uh, that's going on here. And, uh, and then we've got a little bit of decay in the front of the theater. This is almost a non-problem compared to the others, but there's some... <laughs> obviously, somewhere 50 years ago, there was a water issue. The Grand has uh, interior gutters, uh -huh. which, as I understand, can be problematic if they're not kept oh. up. Uh -huh. And it probably happened before it was the city building, to be honest. It uh -huh. probably happened uh, uh -huh. sometime in the 50s, is kind of the, uh, what I hear being kicked around. And understand, I'm not the engineer. I'm just kind of the reporter here. Um, and finally, just another area kind of in need of repair and, and, and some decay. So what we've got basically is a building that was state of the art in 1883. Oh, gotcha. and, um, and, and this is probably all normal wear and tear that would have been completely hidden uh, under normal, normal circumstances, sure. which is why I often say that, that, uh, that Tom Carroll's is a hero, oh. because there's, there are a couple of instances that the city had researched of similar issues in similar vintage theaters mm -hmm. where if the plaster starts to give it's kind of a cascade effect. Mm -hmm. There was a theater in Delaware uh, and I'm not saying this is what would have happened as much as it's right. what could have happened sure. but with similar kinds of issues there are photos that thankfully after a performance mm -hmm. if you look at the photos it looks like the seating area is covered by a tarp. The tarp is the entire plaster ceiling mm -hmm. that came down in a wow. single sheet and you know, who knows it, when? I don't think it's a question of if. Um, yeah. and, and, and I had to be convinced as hard as anybody. I, sure. you know, I, I love that building, and boy, tearing down that ceiling was uh, uh, was a it was an emotional decision for everybody sure. concerned. But you got it. When you're starting to deal with public safety. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't ask the questions. You just say, okay, how do we make this work? And isn't it funny? It was public safety, the sprinkling of, of, of everything that led to this. That exactly. led to everything. Yeah. Exactly. So. So. so have you got some time for a few short questions? I just absolutely. Kind of run through. Cheryl, maybe you want to start yeah. with some? No, well, go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. Uh, one thing about the, the historical society, just for our viewers, because it is on the register, it's to be protected. And so the rules of renovation are, by their very nature, strict, aren't they? Exactly. I mean, they, they have a... They have compliance officers and they have architects yeah, on their yeah. staff, and their jobs are basically yeah. just to, they need to verify right. so that the, you know, a less scrupulous entity than we are uh, wouldn't just say, well, we want to put a suspended ceiling in or right. whatever it might be. And so the Historical Society is looking at what you're proposing to do? And then yes. they, And they're going to say, you can or you have to make changes? Or we want you to do more okay. uh, work. We don't, we don't, we, we like your report, but we want to see okay. more evidence or we want to see, okay. I think they, they could come up with any of those okay. scenarios. And there's no cost estimates because you don't know exactly where it's going to go. They're looking at two, frankly, two different, um, uh, right now, two different fixes. Okay. One fix, uh, the, in many ways, the easier of the two fixes would be to peel the whole roof structure off and replace it with new material, okay. which sounds more complex, but at the same time, you're not eking in from nooks and crannies with yeah. pieces of steel to do stuff. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not prepared to say that's the cheaper yeah. way or the faster way. I just don't have sure. that knowledge. Sure. But 
Uh, but it, in many ways, it almost seems like it would be, it certainly would be the lasting way. Then you'd have the building. Realistically, know. what do you think the time lag on this is? It's so hard to say. Yeah. There are so many variables okay. in the in this process and then in the due diligence of city administration yeah, to yeah. report to the council and the council doing its due diligence right. on behalf of the citizenry. It's so difficult to say. I, I can tell you I have a lot of different scenarios, some of them unsavory. Yeah. Um, uh, as far as, uh, you know, we've got, we've got people, frankly, whose jobs are on the line. Uh, and and, and, and I, I don't want to be shut down for a prolonged amount of time, yeah. but it has to be, I have to be aware, you know. Yeah, realistic, I, I, it's got to be longer We're than stewards shorter. of a public building, yeah. right. and, and there, are, there are ways that this needs to be done. Yeah. And, and we'll find our way through it. But yeah. as, as far as the timeline, all I can tell you is I have a plan A, B, C, and D. Yeah depending on what the news is and how fast it moves along. Is this the greatest challenge that the Opera House has faced in its history? Or one of the greatest? Other than, you know, certainly since its renovation, yeah, I yeah, think it has been. Yeah. It's just, uh, uh, because really what it is is finishing the renovation yeah, in many ways. Yeah, sure. who, who pays for this, whatever the cost may be? I mean, does the city, because it owns the building, do are they responsible for the entire thing? Uh, does the historical society kick in any portion here? Um, I wish that part B was the answer. <laughs> uh, the, the truth is it, is, it is at present, as the landlord and the owner of the building, it's the city's responsibility. Um, the foundation is trying to help figure out ways to, you know, politically, maybe there are, maybe there's stimulus dollars out there, maybe there mm -hmm. are uh, some grant dollars out there, and, and, and we're trying to help uh, with our resources, okay. the city administration find ways to navigate uh, sure. other ways to help fund this as well. Uh, and that's what we hope. The, the sad uh, fact, as far as I can tell, as far as I can see, is being listed protects the building, but it hasn't <laughs> yet, to my investigation, offered any financial yeah. assistance yeah. in keeping the building protected. But yet they'll tell you exactly how yeah. much you've got to do and what you've got to do and pretty much how you've got to do it, too. Yeah, so. it seems to be that <laughs> way. Yeah. And the repairs are not in the capital improvement budget for 2009. No, the, for the, the, the right. sprinklers are in the capital okay. improvements okay. budget, but that's that's it. Yeah. And obviously we we will have exceeded that. How long have you been closed right now, Joe? We closed on February 24. Fourth, I okay, believe. and we're taping this on the 16th of April, mm -hmm. so it's coming up on almost two almost months. Are salaries going on during this time? Right now, I, everybody is. Uh, I had I had been making some adjustments, quite frankly, because of economic concerns, uh, and we had gone through a small layoff just prior to that. Uh, we haven't changed anything since. Frankly, the staff's been working kind of harder uh, because of all that, all the relocating and all the work that's been going into sure. that. It's yeah. um, it's actually been. Um, a busy time for us, a, a f almost frantic time. So at, at present, everyone's still employed and everyone's still working very hard. Well, hopefully they'll remain and be able I to remain I hope so. It's a it. tremendous team, <clears throat> and I would hate to see uh, anything prolonged uh, cause me to make some really difficult choices. Sure. Well, we're going to stay on top of this, Joe, and, um, you know, as, as it unfolds, and certainly when it's done, we're going to have you come back Great. and, and yeah, talk thanks. about the process. Well, I'm always yeah. available, too, to yeah. give you an update from our side. And I right. appreciate yeah. it very much. And we appreciate you being so flexible yes. and being here in a, in yeah. a pinch like this. My tonight. pleasure. And, so, and thanks, thanks for so much. doing such a great job yeah. so far. Thank you. Yeah. 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 We're going to take a real short break. When we come back, uh, City Manager Mark Roloff will be here. We'll, we'll be right back. mom and dad. Well, I finally have some time off, so I'm writing to tell you that I'm doing well. We have good days and bad days over here. We try to remember the good ones and get through the bad ones. Mostly we have each other, and that's what keeps us going. And mom, since you asked, if anyone wants to help, just tell them to contact the USO. You can't believe how much they do for us. With love, your son, Michael. Every year, the U.S. Department of the Treasury receives about 1.4 million reports of problems with paper checks. Checks can be lost, stolen, or delayed. If you still receive Social Security payments by paper check, Treasury wants you to know about a safer, more convenient way to get your money. 
the Direct Express prepaid debit MasterCard. The Direct Express card is new and is available to anyone receiving Social Security benefits, even if you don't have a bank account. Your monthly benefits will be automatically placed onto your card account each month on the day your money is due. While other debit cards cost money, it is possible to use the Direct Express card for free to make purchases, pay bills, and get cash at thousands of locations nationwide. There are no sign-up or monthly account fees. No more waiting for the mail or worrying about lost or stolen checks. Call 1-877-212-9991 or visit www.usdirectexpress.com. If we were in an emergency situation, we don't have extra. We have a little bit of water and a little bit of food. A meeting no. place, no. No. I don't think we have a first aid kit. We have tuna fish, we have right. beans, we so. have um, um, canned beans. tomatoes, true. you know. That's true, but uh, that's really not survival food. Tomato we, paste. Yeah, well, oh. yeah, right? And welcome back to the second half of Ayan Oshkosh. And uh, as promised, City Manager Mark Roloff is here. And uh, thank you much. We know thank you're you missing a very important dinner tonight to be yes. here. Yeah, so. well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, well, as you know, we just had on Joe Furlow. And, um, you know, they've got quite a situation over there. So uh, the city, um, you know, he can't sing your praises loud enough um, for being able to or willing to step up and do whatever is necessary here. This. I'm sure could end up being very, very costly. Um, where does the city come up with this kind of extra money then? Well, you know, it's it, the reason I think we're working so closely together is we recognize that we just can't get this issue resolved by um, bickering or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Joe and I have had constant communication about this whole project. Uh, we do have $235,000 budgeted this year in the budget for the uh, the sprinkler project, right. which is morphed into right. into this project, yeah. so that that makes it difficult. But it, at the same time, we have we have the money. Now, where the money came from was borrowing, and unfortunately, as I've talked about earlier on previous programs, uh, that's a problem we have that we right. use borrowing for 100% of our capital projects. Yep. So we don't put any cash on the table, uh, like a down payment or anything. So the quick and easy answer is, you know, to the degree the city contributes to the project, it'll be more borrowing, which is not something that you necessarily want to do. Um, we are looking at every avenue that's available, and we've been working with Congressman Petri's office, Senator Cole's office, to see if there may be something in the federal stimulus package. There was about $900,000. Actually, Joe told me this one. Joe used to work in Manitowoc. Uh, they were able to find $900,000 to do some renovations to the Manitowoc uh, Opera House, which is 50 years younger than ours. So if they can get it for a youngster, they can get it for an a oldie but a goodie in the Grand Opera House. So <coughs> we are pursuing that, and Senator, Senator Cole's office and Representative Petri's office have been receptive to assisting us. Whether that translates into money remains to be seen, but that is one of the efforts that we are going to undertake. Um, at this point, though, we don't know exactly how yeah. much it's going to be because exactly. we got to get our arms around this thing. So it, it looks so, like it's it's growing and it's going to be large. It's it's huh? growing. I think it's gotten to a point where it's grown as large as it will be from a a scope of work. But yeah. the state historical society likes to make sure right. the historical eyes and T's right. are right. dotted and crossed. So we have to we have to respect that. And I think Joe talked about yes, that earlier. Yes. So yeah. we got to take care of that. Yep. Well, let me ask you a question about uh, the, the, you know, reserve fund, Mark, because I know they, they dipped into the reserves for the bathrooms over at the Leach Amphitheater a few years back, um, and, you know, some of us weren't in favor of that. I mean, the reserve fund is supposed to be there for a rainy day type, catastrophic type thing, but this is, is kind of a, while not catastrophic, it's kind of a rainy day thing that certainly was unexpected and needs to be taken mm -hmm. care of. Um, you know, when you look at borrowing, do you then look at, you know, how much money you're going to lose in interest from your general reserves in comparison to how much interest you're going to be paying on what you borrow and then make a decision? Or how, how do you as a city manager do that? What I do with respect to reserves is um, there's a formula that is used actually by the bond rating services okay. um, that takes a look at our borrowing. 
And it's a formula that you usually try to work out between your financial advisor and the rating agency. We have not reached any such agreement in the past with our rating agency on what that is. But it's generally about 15% of revenues, actually, so that if revenues went down, would you have a sufficient amount of revenues to back it up? And it, it's 15% of this formula in revenues, and we haven't been able to, to identify that with the borrowing agency yet because we haven't had a chance to meet with them yet. But that's really what you focus on. And you want to keep that 15 to 20% number in there so that you can maintain your, your good bond rating. So if there are funds available and you can dip into that reserve and hopefully replenish it with surpluses from future years, you do that. But you want to maintain that 15%. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what that number is yet. I'm right. still mm -hmm. trying to work through that with our uh, audit for this year. But once I know that, then if funds were available for, for the grant or for any project, you want to make sure that you're there. Um, if it's not available, then you have to say, okay, well, where do we get the money from? Um, I would prefer to try to do more on capital projects, be it the grand or mm -hmm. streets or storm sewers or anything. I would prefer to have a little bit of our money in the till. No different than mm -hmm. you would prefer to put money down on a car or a house. That's sure. something we need to do. So once we know that, then we'll have an idea of where we're going. We have $235,000 already allocated, and we can certainly use that to get the ball rolling. I would just love to get the ball rolling on the project because <laughs> right. it's not rolling right now. Okay. And right now the holdup is getting the State Historical Society to go through it. Um, I, I do have to say that our local historical people, the Grand Advisory Board, which is um, really, they've been in existence since the Grand was renovated back in 83. Mm -hmm. They actually have the most historical perspective on this than anybody. Mm -hmm. And they've been very helpful. And they're supportive of what we're doing. Uh, the Landmarks Commission took a look at it last week as well, and they're in support of what we're doing. Well, I, I got that secondhand. I, I got to be careful about saying <laughs> yeah. that, but it appears mm -hmm. as though they were very receptive to what we were doing. So locally, the people who understand the history of the Grand better than anybody, mm -hmm. they know that this is the right thing to do. Sure. All the things that Joe talked about earlier. So now it's a matter of getting the State Historical Society to give us the green light so we can proceed with this because as Joe mentioned, the operational uh, situation with the grand means we got to get moving on this. Right. From the city, we're just the landlord. But from the grand, which is the, the, it, the facility is wonderful, but it's what goes on in the facility that makes it such a jewel for the community. Yeah. They have to continue to survive. And for them to be sitting in this limbo mm -hmm. situation for, as you mentioned earlier, two months and, and going now, yeah. That's a tough situation, and, and I think you know that's why, that's why I want to stay engaged with the Grand Foundation because we got to get this resolved. Yeah, two months and remaining time so uncertain. I yeah. mean, yeah. months, months. And you don't have bids yet. You don't have approval yet. We're we're looking at this is going to be real quick. Right, huh? and that's you know we've are, we've been working with the engineer and C.R. Meyer to a certain degree to do the emergency right. stuff. But now you know what can we do right. to get that project going? Because right. normally the Grand starts mid-September right. and that's that's four months away yeah. five months away yeah yeah all right anything else on the grand or you no only to say that certainly private money uh, we could have a, a fundraiser from private funds this is a very generous community that that would be another alternative in addition to city and, and federal stimulus money, absolutely right? but and that's where the foundation <laughs> has done right. their work over the years they were already under way with a fundraising <laughs> yes. project with the whole sprinkler the, no, not no. the sprinkler, the, the whole Grand Lounge. Oh, okay. Yeah. They, they had p raised money, I think, to the tune of like $300,000. Okay. Yeah, he mentioned so, that. So, you know, the Grand donors previously came <laughs> to the table. <laughs> yeah. And so it's hard to dip into that of well, course. especially as the... The wells had a little right. bit of a dry spell. Well, we'd be happy to write a check, but they don't pay us too much to do this show. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, that'll remain to yeah. be seen. But I, I think they understand that it'd be great if we could get, we, it's always great to have the private support right. of the community, right. and, but you don't always want to lean on no. the government, but we're, we're all stuck and we all realize that we're in this together. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about uh, the state of the city. Before we get to the state of the city, though, I want to find out about the state of the uh, Wisconsin Street Bridge. Um, yes, <laughs> I got the answer for you. <laughs> I, I, I had blogged about this the other day because I guess I'm most frustrated that there was no communication. Yes, the, the uh, DOT sent out a press release, but 
it wasn't. It was vague. Yeah, yeah. it was vague, yeah. and I didn't see the Northwestern do anything on it. If they even received the press release, they did do something on the bridge being closed. That three of the four bridges being closed for um, you know um, some not even closed, just Seasonal lane reason. restrictions, yeah. Uh, yeah. lane restrictions for some inspections or something like that. Oh, okay. But I didn't see them do anything on on this at all, and I'm like, what what's going on here? You know. So anyway, uh, Tony Palmieri. Uh, got in touch with Dave Patek, and Dave got in touch with someone at the DOT. You've got some answers too. By the time this airs, the bridge will be taken care of. But what have they been doing? What, well, it's been it sounds on? as though there were so, there was some concrete that was not prepared properly when it was poured for the bridge, and that was over on the edges, it seems. And so they had to basically remove it and replace it. And you couldn't really do that until springtime, mm -hmm. so they waited until springtime. There are also some what are called punch list items, sort of the unfinished work that's on the bridge that um, w the bridge was able to open but still under contract with the, the firm that was hired by the DOT, and they had to take care of a few other things as well. But the heavy-duty work that, that really brought you to yeah. your question in the first place was faulty concrete, and under the contract, they have to replace it. Um, so it wasn't an issue of something was forgotten, but something was definitely not done correctly, and the DOT caught it, and they, they, they're holding the contractor accountable. More of our tax dollars. It's just coming out of well, a different pocket. No, this is not. This is the contractor's pocket. That is def okay. All right. No, okay. Contractor's they're, fault. Okay. Con no, it's fault. not. It's, okay. Yeah, good. It, That's good. I'm glad you asked that because <laughs> no, it's That's not. Good. Nobody's yeah. paying any extra money. The contractor okay. did All faulty right. work and he's under contract. He's got to fix it. Well, I think we can write out the check now to the Opera House, knowing that. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You bet. Um, and I noticed on the way over here tonight. Now, before the outermost lanes had been closed and the innermost lanes were open. Now, on the way over here tonight, they've got the inner lanes closed and the outermost lanes are open so they must be and that's some of the punch list then. item okay. stuff they're just fixing some things and, okay. and uh, if there's any concrete it's it's part of that i guess there wasn't enough air in the concrete there mm. there needs to be a certain amount of air and there wasn't enough air and so you were going to have cracks or something occur over the years if it wasn't done so well, they caught I, it and I'm and glad it's getting taken care of but I just at no cost. first I yeah. chuckled and then I just got upset about it because I thought you know geez this hasn't even been open six months yet and now here we are and they're tearing up concrete so well, anyway. when you find an air you really do need to take care of it right away yeah, so yeah, this is actually good. a good thing that we caught it or good that the state caught it well thanks for getting those answers for us and again by the time this airs the both all well, the lanes well. will be open and it'll be good to go so yeah. go ahead <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. Can Throw I, your next question out there. I think part of the impetus for this was that Cheryl got cut off on one of the lanes. Oh, well. I, no. <laughs> no, I, I actually did not. <laughs> I just thought, what is going on here? No, that, that's, uh, it did make sense. The press release said something to the effect of uh, maintenance. It's like, what do you need to maintain on a new bridge? Oh, <laughs> well, exactly. It was a good yeah, question, so. and I'm glad, you, I'm glad you asked it yeah, so we got yeah, the answer out there. Right. Well, I, I guess we want to talk about the state of the city. Um, you were reviewed negatively by Stu Rickman of the Northwestern. I guess he thinks you're either a pastor or an elected mayor that has to be popular, not a CEO of the city. I, I just don't think you should get performance grades. You're, you're not the pastor of the congregation and you're not an elected mayor. You're the CEO and so your report is on what's going on in the city from a C I, so I thought that was sort of a lame duck. Oh, I, 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 I'd, I'd known Stu was going to write some yeah, he, stuff. He does this, by the way, every year now. This is every year now in the state of the, the city. He hits it every year. It must be a, sort of an annual sort of critique. But I, oh, I tried to critique it myself afterwards, you? and uh, <laughs> I, you know, I thought I was trying to present a very positive yeah, image. Yeah. I thought I did, but I think, you know, Stu and just anybody who says that they want to see not just optimism in yeah. terms of an attitude, but optimism that we can get things done. Right. And uh, one of the things I did not say, which I think in retrospect maybe okay. I should, okay. state of the city's good. Uh -huh. And I, I'll say yeah. that with a smile right yeah. to the camera. Yeah. The state of the city's Should've good. Should have been the starting sentence. Now, yeah. you know, it's sort of like, it's good shape for the shape I'm in. I mean, yeah. We're, yeah. In the, we're in the midst of a, a poor economy. Right. That isn't something unique to Oshkosh. So is that something that we need to talk about? Right. Well, yeah. That's how we're existing in the context. Sure. But the city itself, you know, the reserves are decent. Are they at 15%? I don't know yet. <laughs> but they're, they're good finances. Mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure's improving. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. I just was over at one of our uh, senior citizen uh, uh, 
uh, housing complexes yesterday and an elderly woman said to me, you got to fix these roads. And it's like, mm -hmm. we've made progress, mm -hmm. but if, if your road's good, Dan, mm -hmm. you're happy. If yep. your road's not good, Cheryl, you're right. not happy. And we have to sure. slowly get at all those things. And okay. uh, so I got an earful from, from this elderly <laughs> lady, and that's okay. Yeah. What a way to spend yeah. your birthday, huh? That's okay. Can you <laughs> just kind of review, I mean, just in, in, in a synopsis, what is the state of the city? I mean, what, what are the things that you're most proud of? What are the things that are concerns? Well, you know, in terms of me being proud, I, I think there's a lot of assets that we have. I mean, okay. you talked about when we were talking about the grand earlier. Okay. There's just so many groups and organizations that are that are willing and able to do something, whether it's a structural issue or a right. social issue. Uh, I was also over at the new food uh, oh. pantry or the community the pantry. Building. Yep. The old cops yes. building. I mean, just wonderful. Yeah. Great the people location. jumped out and did that. So we've got, the, you talk about the potential, we've got great potential, and we have to take advantage of that. Okay. Unfortunately, we may have to wait a little bit with the way the economy is, sure. and, we'll, and we'll deal with that issue. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I think we are in good shape, but we just have to address certain issues. Infrastructure is still an ongoing issue, right. and we've done a lot, and I talked a little bit at State of the City about what we were doing looking forward. Okay. Uh, council just the other night awarded a contract for uh, what's called an inflow and infiltration study. Right. Finding the sources of how stormwater is getting into our sanitary system. Um, we have a quarter of a million budgeted for it. It won't scratch the surface. We will be spending money on I&I &I for years to come. Mm -hmm. I have found out over the period of the last few months that I&I &I was originally looked at in the 80s, but it was uh, not looked upon favorably because it was going to make people make some changes mm -hmm. perhaps to their house or something mm -hmm. or dig up their street and sure. people didn't want to do that. I think now people are a little more open to the yeah. fact that we got to mm -hmm. do this stuff mm -hmm. and we may have to say you got to quit connecting your sump pump to your sanitary sewer system right. because it creates an open line. Yeah. But we got manholes throughout the city that have pick holes in them and those manholes were the pick holes are so we can open it and clean it mm -hmm. when we need to. But if that pick hole goes straight through, which most of them do, the older ones, it's an opening and water's just pouring in. And when we had our streets flooded, you know, sadly the street was supposed to flood. That's your first line of defense when you have a major storm. But when it started going into the sewer and flipping the manhole covers, and then it was just gushing into the system, that's what caused things to um, go back into people's homes. So those are the things we have to attack. Uh, and we will be attacking those aggressively through this study. Uh, I mean, the study is going to initially talk about manholes, but then it'll talk about where uh, there are sources of uh, storm sewer pipe that might be connected to sanitary pipe. We're going to have to attack those as well. And then the cross connects that we'll have to deal with residents. And there'll be more education. So I'm happy to mention it over and over again <laughs> because people may not be watching this this sure. show and may right. watch it another time. So. Check your sump pumps. If they're connected to the sanitary, get it changed right away. Um, so, so this study, um, it's, it's getting underway now, Mark. Um, how long do you think it'll take? And do they, how do they do this? Do they start with your major streets first and then spread out into the lesser traveled streets? Or how do they work this? Usually, because you have to work backwards from you know, the, larger, the larger system. Um, and they will do that. But they are going to perform inspections of our manholes, which is our first one, because you can have cracks in the seals, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of ways that it can get into. It's not just the manhole itself. Um, but if you go around and you see a manhole that has a crack in it, mm -hmm. chances are that crack you know, figures out a way to get into the sewer itself. They're going to be performing manual inspections of these manholes. But we have thousands of them. Sure. So this <laughs> they'll just get started right. and they'll they'll get a section that we know has had the worst areas the of flooding area of Ohio and, we'll, and, and we'll start hitting those areas yeah, first. Yeah. Um, you know the new manholes that are on Ohio Street now they're okay sure. right, because they were replaced sure. completely but all the side streets you know you got to start looking at those things so we'll start attacking those right away. The quarter of a million I can assure you will go up. Um, yeah. That was a, a place marker to get the ball rolling on it We'll spend that, and then we'll work on the implementation. Um, I, I will go to the council. If we have an opportunity to get some work done this year and it's going to take more money, I will go to the council. There's a reason the sewer fund has a reserve. And it's it, just like you talked about earlier. The sewer fund has a reserve separate from the city's mm -hmm. general fund reserve. 
if we have to use money to get some of that stuff done, we will. Manholes are quick and easy fixes, yeah. mm -hmm. and the payoff is great. is great. So yeah. Any stimulus money in anything like this, or that's a long shot? I think we're giving it a shot. No, it's funny because there are. It's the way the stimulus money is uh, situated. There might be some money. Okay. Clean water fund yeah. money is yeah. part of it. So we're. We're rattling that cage yeah. too, so we're we're looking around for every opportunity. But we have money in our budget for this. It's it's there. We have reserves in the available for it. So money is not necessarily going to be the issue. It's going to be the um, ability to get on it and get as much done as soon as possible. And so while one crew is inspecting and working on one part of the city um, construction and repairs, if you will, could be going on in another part of the city. Well, manholes can go, can, yeah, I mean, manholes are yeah. really just isolated dots throughout the city. Mm -hmm. Those can take place without a great deal of notice. I mean, you'll see a manhole and by the time you sure. call me about it, it'll probably be done sure. and they'll move on to the next one. But as, as they move past the manholes and they get into something else, when they discover problem areas, those things you can start trying to attack while they're then moving to another area to inspect or do whatever? As we find connections, then we, we start looking at doing street projects that say, okay, when we do the street project, if, if in the 50s through the 70s, it appears as though um, the, the good thing to do was to connect some storm sewers to sanitary sewers that was believed, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> and it was done throughout the country. Mm -hmm. We don't know how much, how much is down there mm -hmm. um, because a lot of this was done sort of on the fly mm -hmm. and people just started to do more and more of it. As we identify those, then we'll say, okay, when we do a street, when we do this street, we know we've got to take away that cross connect and it already exists. They do things called smoke tests. They put smoke into the pipes and they see if it comes out a sanitary manhole or if it comes out a sewer, a storm sewer manhole. If it comes out of a storm sewer uh, manhole or um, inlet, we know there's a problem. Okay. What does one manhole cover cost? Oh, you know, a few hundred dollars, okay. I think. I'm just curious. I mean, yeah. you're going to replace a lot of them. Yeah. Um, well, it's not, yeah, we're going to be replacing some of the manholes, but yeah. the chimney seals, yeah. you're, you're spending several hundred dollars yeah. easily um, per manhole. But when you talk about the value that you're going to get oh, out of it, it's, yeah, piece, it's, it's a no-brainer. All right. Other road construction um, is, is going to be going on. Uh, you mentioned roads before and how that elderly lady yesterday said fix some of these streets. So um, what, what streets are we looking at fixing this summer? Uh, well, mostly local streets. I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to punt on that answer a little bit, encourage people to go to our city website uh, to take a look at the streets specifically. We're not doing a lot of big projects themselves. Um, in fact, when I gave State of the City, I don't know if I even gave a, a specific street, mm -hmm. um, s some of the smaller streets. There are some streets off of Ohio and Ninth that we're doing, um, some streets here on the, on the near north side, uh, just because those are some mm -hmm. of the oldest areas, mm -hmm. and they've got, they connect to larger storm mm -hmm. sewers or sanitary sewers, so we kind of work backwards. We get the big ones done, and then we move back. I know Irving um, on, on the east side of Maine is being reconstructed mm -hmm. right now. Moving very quickly, by the way. Well, that's, that's, that's the idea. They um, really are. And we're also doing uh, you know, the, um, some ponds this year as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing, uh, hopefully doing one over by uh, Tipler School. We're working with the school district on that one. And uh, another one over by the Armory. Okay. Um, we're working on those because that puts the, gets the water out of the way for a while and, and allows things to calm down. So those are the things we're doing. Um, unfortunately with this, I, I think there are some people who are hoping for something immediate. The manholes will be immediate and they'll be really valuable. The other ones are gonna take time, so we'll take care of some of that. The fact that Ohio Street's been reconstructed, I think will help a lot. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, we, we cross our fingers and we hope that you know, Mother Nature is kinder <laughs> to us this year. And meanwhile, we're just deliberately going through it. Um, we've got you know, about seven and a half million dollars for street improvements, as well as storm sewer in the seven million dollar range. So we've got a lot of money budgeted this year to do, and we need to do more of it. Got a couple of quick questions. Sure. Uh, do you get heartburn with heartburn with the coming of a new mayor and a new council? <laughs> oh, that's a, I don't know if that's a fair question. <laughs> I have had turnovers in councils okay. and mayors over my whole career, okay. and while it causes heartburn for others, I really, okay. I, I don't want to get too corny, no, no. but it's opportunity, it really creates opportunities, and 
you know, the whole idea is to set a vision where you want to go and, and, and have the council right. work with you on that. Right. And one of the things I'm going to be doing uh, within the first month is uh, getting together with the council to talk about what staff's been talking about internally okay. in terms of strategic planning sure. and get them to uh, help us shape a vision so that once you have that vision set right. and the goal set, right. then we're going to be, you know, we're going to be on the same page in terms of where we want to be. Sure. Then we can disagree yeah. on on details and how we might want to get right. those things done. But if we're still reaching the same goal, that that Doesn't I think we're going to have a lot of yeah. value to that. And okay. uh, that was what I was intending to do. It's with a new council, and we purposely oh, waited until after the election so we wouldn't be re-educating a new group. We're going to start with the new council immediately and and get okay. some get some work done. Is the culling of deer and Vulcan query over? Um, I don't think the problem's gone away, okay. so I don't think it's over. I had a call today that I didn't recall from, that I didn't return from a resident who's still concerned about it. Mm -hmm. I think the issue's still there. Okay. Uh, we can't bury our heads in the sand on okay. it, uh, but certainly there are people who disagree with this. I talk with other city managers and administrators throughout the state. They don't understand why it's a problem here, okay. um, and their problem is okay. is severe. Uh, there as it is here. They don't understand why the culling is a problem here or yes, they, why the urban deer is a problem here? No, they don't understand why it's such a controversial issue. Hmm. It is not a controversial issue in other communities. And when I look at that, I say to myself, we are spending city taxpayer resources on an issue that is a no-brainer in other communities. And so I want to get to the, the bottom of it so we can work through it. And I think the police department's been unfairly uh, criticized for their involvement. Their involvement has really been a facilitator. Um, I was even asked a question about why would the police shoot the deer? And I was like, where did you get the idea that the police were doing that? Mm -hmm. All the police were doing was doing uh, street mm -hmm. uh, control, which they would do for any Anything. any type of operation, including a parade. So I think it was unfair for the police department to be criticized. And um, I'm probably going to remove it a little bit from the PD because They've done such good with their team policing approach, and this is this does not put the police department in a favorable light, and it's just not fair. And I want to try to get the community to wrap their, themselves in it and say, okay, what do we want to do? Um, we do need to look at non-lethal methods, and we have always used that as our first uh, line of defense. And that's what we're going to continue to do. At this time of year, you can't use of lethal course, means, so we're going to continue with the non-lethal means. Yeah. Well, we've only got about uh, 30 seconds left, so just, uh, this, this went way too fast. But um, what what can we look forward to um, other than the seating of a of um, the new mayor and um, a replacement for him on the council? I really think, as I mentioned earlier, the strategic planning, getting getting the council uh, engaged with the staff to to work on those issues and try to get some agreement on those things. Okay. I'm going to try to work through. We might um, do some little things. I've talked to. Uh, Mayor-elect Deslinger about perhaps uh, moving the workshops up earlier in the evening mm -hmm. so that they're not okay. put at the end of the evening mm -hmm. and everybody's tired and wants to go home. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a few different things and he had a few ideas. Okay, good. Well, Mark, thanks so much for being Thank here. Thank you. I got to come back again. We didn't cover well, half the stuff. I know. We're going to have you back for sure. <laughs> That'll Probably be fine. Probably sometime in May or June. So. That'll be yeah. fine. I'd be happy right. to. Great. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks to our guests this hour and uh, to you at home. We'll see you next time. Until then, take good care. We'll see you, uh, I guess, next time. <laughs> Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh. <laughs>